Now it is an emergency. It's a national emergency. Overdoses up. The opioid epidemic. A medical emergency. Fentanyl is forms an epidemic. One of the most of America. Police in a small town in Ohio releasing a stunning and very sobering photograph to drive home the danger of heroin. When I was a young man and such, if you didn't have a college degree, you'd always work for the power company, you'd go to work for Crucible, there were good jobs in the potteries. But what happened, the economy shifted around and those, they weren't there. And I think that brings on a kind of, if you'll allow me to say, loss of hope. Between 60, 1965 and 1985, over 50% of the jobs were lost in this community. Uh, in 1965, the first pottery closed, uh, the first major pottery closed. And then between 65 and 85, just about all of them closed. I think there were four left in 85, uh, compared to 120 in the early 1900s. Then in 1985 is when the real bomb dropped. Crucible Steel announced they were going bankrupt. Crucible Steel employed 4,500 people. Our city at that time was around 26,000 residents in 1985. So 4,500 of those people, those were considered the best paying jobs in this community, were out of work at the drop of a button. I think it was a gradual slide into what you describe as hard drugs. Pictures sometimes do tell a remarkable story, and this is one. A remarkable one, a disturbing one, Martin, and that seems to be the case here. And it also seems to be the story of a police officer who was possibly in the right place at the right time. I want to take you to East Liverpool, Ohio. Uh, the school bus stopped, activated the lights, was discharging kids. Uh, the, the gentleman that was in front of me had to brake hard that he almost you know, caused a crash. Uh, he got the vehicle stopped, the bus pulled away and he remained there. Uh, as traffic started moving, he just kind of drifted off onto a side street. He just abruptly stopped. Uh, and then that's when I got out to investigate to see what's going on. But I'm limited at that time because I'm in my own personal vehicle. I got up to the car, made contact with the driver. Uh, you could see that he was obviously impaired and he, he motioned toward this right front seat passenger, which when I gazed in there, you could see that I actually thought she was deceased at the time. She was completely unconscious, purple. Uh, and then while you're kind of scanning the interior of the car, that's when there was a, a little boy that was in the, in the back seat of the car. So as I'm talking to this gentleman, I shut the car off, got the keys, and then he ultimately went unconscious. And I seem to get the same story, the same reason a lot of these people resorted to these type of drugs. Uh, a lot of them claim at some point they were, they were injured, um, automobile accident, and uh, they were on painkillers. And uh, they got addicted to the painkillers and the doctor felt that, you know, enough is enough. They stopped giving them these prescription painkillers and, uh, and it was a lot more difficult to find and a lot more expensive to find the prescription painkillers on the street. So they resorted to the, uh, the street drugs and, and that's unfortunate. We knew it was coming. The best days we had were in the late 40s. Uh, when I married my wife, this church had 719 people. Families were down to 120. It's just, this has not been the place that people stay. I saw good people leave. I see young people saying, what's in it for me? Will I really make it through it? And if I do, what do I have to look forward to? There gotta be things for people to do. There gotta be things to do. We call them jobs. A portion to do with your life that makes you feel complete. And if you don't have that, you're under a terrible, terrible strain to keep going because life is not easy. It's kind of tough to get up in the morning and not know whether you're going to exist for the rest of the day. What are you going to do? And then it ceases, well, then the next day, will that be any better? 